Good morning, everybody. We uh, we have sexual topics on the show tonight, but we will do them as always in good taste. First up, we have Susie Randall. Here is a woman who uh, who did it all. She was a model, a nude model. Then she became a high fashion model, uh, and then she became a photographer. And uh, she somehow convinced Hugh Hefner to use her pictures, but she would sell them to him only if he brought her over from London. She had taken some photographs of nude models there. Uh, I guess the ultimate achievement in her career was that she shot herself with a camera for Hustler magazine. I want to find out about that. How does how do you do yourself for Hustler magazine? Maybe do a, what stop action, but she'll be out here in a couple of seconds, and then Gloria Leonard will join us a little bit later on. Now here is a woman who has been a registered nurse, a fashion model, a nude model, most recently a freelance photographer, who has snapped titillating and scintillating photographs for the magazines that include Playboy, Penthouse, We, Hustler, and Chic magazines. Her name is Suze Randall, and she has chronicled this weird, strange, varied, and interesting career in the new book entitled simply Suze Sexist, about which she says all the filth in this book is true. And this woman <laughs> actually shot herself for Hustler magazine. How do you do that? Is it a time switch on the camera and then you run around in front of it? Well, you could do it that way, but that's kind of exhausting. You've got to build a cable release. You've got a camera oh, right. on a motor drive, on a tripod with a mirror behind, and then you have a cable, and you've got to put a button. You've got to actually build it. You can't, can't buy it. And then you just press the button whenever you're sort of uh, ready. Mm -hmm. And the mirror and behind the camera. And, the and then be the camera turns itself. And the mirror behind the camera tells you whether you're ready or not. Yeah, so yes. you've got all the creases out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice shape. How do you get from a uh, registered nurse to a uh, uh, girly magazine photographer? Well, it's sort of the same sort of business, really. I mean, my mother didn't quite realize how well trained I was for the pinup industry when she sent me into nursing. But in England, the nursing is, is very poorly paid. It's highly prestigious, but it's very poorly paid. And I was doing my midwifery, which is a student training mm -hmm. after your training. I forgot to mention that, that you were studying to half, become a, a midwife. Half a midwife I was. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of broke, and I saw a suede trouser suit that I wanted to buy, and I bought it. And then I was stuck with the problem of paying for it. Mm -hmm. So I answered an advertisement in an underground newspaper for nude modeling, make up to a hundred pounds a day. And so I answered it and I did the photos and I think I made 17 pounds a day because I was awfully good and I was awfully quick. And the pictures were very good, so I continued. Where were the nude pictures used? Were they for publication or just yes, for Yes, they were. No, 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 they were for publication. In fact, I was pet of the month in Mayfair, which was a, an English publication way back then. It was before pubic hair, in fact. So I had my panties on and my brother's belt, but they were... I thought that pubic hair had been with us since the creation. No, I, I guess it just started, yeah, it started up in 1969. Yeah, We've gone a long way And then Bob Buccioni said, I command pubic hair to be grown. I think that's terrific on there, but I'm glad, glad to hear. So anyway, uh, and then you, you got to become a photographer, and I told a story about how you made Hefner bring you here with your subject or your photographs. How did that go? Well, there was a while. I, I did a lot of modeling did very well and i thought damn it i've got to get on the other side you know got to get some future in here women's lib and all that so i started shooting and i discovered a girl who was later to become the playmate of the year lillian muller who was very very beautiful i mean oh, ah, ah, oh, ah, hmm. and i shot her and i submitted the pictures to penthouse and guccione is a bit piggy in the way that he likes to have all the centerfolds shot by him and so they said no centerfold sues so i said ah. Bye, and sent the pictures to Playboy. They loved the girl. She's just typical, just right for them, real mm -hmm. Annie Fanny. And so they wanted Lillian, and they had to have me. They didn't want me. But they were intrigued by the fact that I was a female taking nude pictures, which was unusual. So they said, OK. And it was the depression, the financial depression. It was quite a, a thing for them to do, and they flew us both over. I neglected to ask you what led you from uh, nude modeling and high fashion modeling into photography. Was it just on a lark, a hobby? Mm, well, it was, it, was, it was on a high point. I, I, I got booked for Vogue, which I never thought I could do. And I thought, OK, <laughs> I'm going to be a star. I can do anything. And I got very high and very elated. And I rushed out after the session and persuaded my bank manager to lend me $1,000 to buy camera equipment because I said, OK, I can do anything. Sure. And I mean, it's true. If, you, if you're determined to do something, you can do it. 
I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I mean, people still say I don't know how to load a camera. <laughs> Loading the camera is not, is, uh, is, a, is, not, right. is not what a photographer makes, you understand? <laughs> and they probably know that now, too. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. What is the most unusual uh, uh, photograph that you've ever taken? And I won't even box it into nudes, but any photograph. Oh. Hopefully it will be one that appeared in a magazine that's got girls without their clothes on, but if not, we'll... <laughs> Oh, I don't know. That's unusual. Bedouins in the Arabian desert. <laughs> no, no, but the, the, I, I should say that. Have you photographed things that are really bizarre? Really rude. I've got a few rude things coming up. But everything is so extreme these days that it, it's, it's very hard to regard them as bizarre. What do you mean things, everything is so extreme? Well, we're going quite far sexually at the moment. For, for example? Well, I mean, in 69, when I first posed, there was, you know, no pubic hair. And then that, that, that was a revelation. Revolution, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And now we, we have um, pictures of uh, some people call gynecological photography. We, we, we've got an emphasis on, on the vagina, which I don't think is such a bad thing. I mean, it's a, it's a different appreciation, sort of uh, able to take the whole mm -hmm. female there body into into account and to appreciate it in its pure glory rather than thinking, oh my God, that, that, that's too much. But there also seems to be a demand for uh, bondage, for uh, leather, mm -hmm. for uh, groups of women Especially and men. Especially in Vogue. I mean, you know, Vogue is really into sort of S&M and bondage. Well, a very reputable clothing manufacturer in the Sunday edition of the New York Times magazine three days ago, uh -huh. which showed a girl swinging a hatchet, you know, with a very mischievous look on her face, <laughs> which, I mean, if you want to read things into that, can you can read all For kinds sure. of stuff into that, okay? For sure. Uh, do editors of magazines or publishers uh, come to photographers such as yourself and say, hey, we really need to have a heavy bondage series for the magazine two months down the road? or mm -hmm. I think yeah, they, what, do, what do they want from you? What, what, what are they looking for? They're looking for something exciting, something that's going to go a little further than the normal. I mean, you go so far and then you suddenly find that everybody else is going that far. And so you've got to go a little bit further. You've got to push it, you know. It, it, perhaps you push it with humor. I've got a really, I can't tell you, but it's too rude. I've got a really good one I'm going to do in a few weeks. Uh, well, if it's funny, you can tell us. No, no, it's real lavatory humor. Oh, okay. But right. it's going to be done very classily. So mm -hmm. Lavatory humor in good taste, right? It's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, you can go quite far if you do it well. What can you, it's acceptable. What can you not do? What are, what are the you can't have a uh, You can't have a penis in the position for penetration. Erected. Yes, it must be sort of 45 degrees downwards. I think that's sort of, this is so silly when you have laws that sort of limit things. And but who, who makes that rule? I don't know, the guys up in the courthouse. I mean, that, that is part of the, the law that, that the penis cannot be erect, and they put it in the words that it must not be in position for penetration. Yeah, but now if you go to adult bookshops, they have books and magazines there which show everything. Now, how come they can, but you can't? God, and by you, I mean no. we hustle yeah, yeah, all the yeah, men's yeah, magazines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. God, I don't know. I mean, they don't get the distribution. It's very difficult. In an adult bookstore, they have to charge an enormous price for what they show. They mm -hmm. don't get an, a distribution like the rest of the magazines. And possibly the mails, the postal. Yes. We should get tied up too, mm -hmm. legally. It's really a shame. Well, maybe it's not a shame, all this legal hustle. It's quite good for the business, actually. Gives it publicity, lots yes. of publicity. And if people think that they can't have something, then that's great, you know, they've got to have it. If, it, if the guys up, <laughs> up in the sky didn't worry about it, I'm sure our business wouldn't be booming as well as it is. Mm -hmm. What are other taboos besides the one that you mentioned? That's the, that, that's the that's, main... That's about it? I... What are some things you wouldn't do? I didn't, I notice I don't say even you wouldn't do, but... <laughs> do, do you discipline yourself? There are some things that you don't do, that you don't photograph. 
Well, I might say one day I won't do that, and then the next day perhaps I will if I get a good idea how to do it well. You know, as long as I'm going to enjoy it and I feel that there's a challenge or that I can do it well. But it, it's just got to be what, what are you looking for a good idea for? I mean, I'm going to drag it out of you, Sue, so you might... <laughs> well, I, I've, I've got to come up with something new. So, I mean, you've actually got to go a bit further. You've got to sort of shock people. I mean, that, that is actually the, the, the main thing about Hustler is, the, is its shock appeal. And mm -hmm. the main danger for Hustler also is that as we're becoming so chic and we're becoming accepted that, that you've got to go further and further. And how far can you go? We'll be right back after these announcements. No opinion. With Suze, one of the only, if not the only, woman photographer of layouts for men's magazines. There are many women who say that pictures of uh, female nudity in men's magazine uh, demeans a woman, uh, makes her a sex object only, uh, and in some way exploits her and her femininity. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about that? Well, because I, uh, you're a profit-making person, uh, you're yeah. a woman who works for herself. I'm I've sure exploited have... myself All right. <laughs> many times. Well, I, I can understand the opinion, but the people that I deal with, I, I get a wide variety of girls that come to me and the girls that pose for me. And they vary from girls that are very broke, who need money, to girls who perhaps are not broke, who feel that they're ugly and they get a great kick on showing you know, showing Themselves. to their friends mm -hmm. that I'm not, oh, blimey, bleep, I'm not, I'm not ugly, I'm beautiful, you know, I'm incredible, and uh, the way I approach it is to, to exalt the woman and to make her as beautiful as possible, is in a sexual way, obviously, but that's the way we operate anyway. I mean, we want men to be turned on to us, we, we want to be loved, mm -hmm. and uh, it's great, it's great fun, I mean, and until I did a nude layout, I didn't realize I could be a model. I had no idea what to do with myself. I was, I lacked confidence. It does give you confidence. It puts you through a number, and you come out, and you're the center of attention. You're, you're a queen for a day, for two days, for a month when you get published. It's great. It's is, it, is it hard to do the first time when you're a model, a nude model? For you, was it? Well, I was kind of a natural. I didn't know about it. I'm an extrovert and a show-off, and I really got into it. Some girls, it, it, you're shy at first. You're, you're nervous. I mean, you're with strangers. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're... But you get to know them really quick. <laughs> 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 and you, well, you've got this camera on you, and uh, people say, oh, great, fantastic, I'll show back, woo-hoo. And you feel like a million dollars. It's hard work as well. I mean, it's it's not not just easy, but it, it, I, I think it's great. Uh, in many of the pictures which are now used for magazines, women are in effect being shown masturbating. Uh, well, are they actually doing that, or is it all? And then with the with the pictures, they will give captions like, "Oh, uh, uh, I." fantasize about so-and-so or such-and-such, and, such and they, they go into supposedly their innermost sexual fantasies. I mean, are they really into that, uh, and are they really uh, uh, excited by the posing session, or is that all done just to kind of titillate the reader? It varies. What's the real story? It you know? varies. It, it depends on the girl, you know. You can get an introvert that, that's very shy, and you could pull it out to her, and she might turn out to be really excited in front of the camera. It varies terribly, but I mean, I, I just know that when I'm in front of the camera, I, I get a great kick out of it. I mean, it's a real narcissistic pleasure mm -hmm. having people looking at you and appreciating you and thinking that you're beautiful, that you're a goddess of love. And I, I think it's marvelous. When you saw the first proofs of your first nude modeling session, were you pleased with them? Yes. You were. I was very naive. <laughs> <laughs> Later, I was told that they were awful. What did they say but was I wrong thought, with them? Oh, well, other photographers always criticize anyway, you know, say, well, the lighting's terrible and this and that. But I was delighted. I just had no idea that I'd photograph that well. Did you have to be airbrushed at all? No, they, they don't airbrush that much, actually. It's very expensive to airbrush a, a color photograph. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do it in the camera. 
Yeah, technically. How about makeup? Do they use a lot of makeup? Yeah, we use quite a bit of makeup. You know, I mean, if you've got a bruise or something, you know, you banged against the door, you just make it up. Makeup is very, very important. Uh, that, that helps everything go smoothly. And it depends on what magazine you work for as to the problems with makeup. Because some magazines, like the Hustler and with Chic, very strong lighting. It's very, it's a real thing, you know, every pore shows. And so that makes it more difficult. Penthouse is more diffused and romantic. And Playboy is sort of in between the two. You know, so it depends what magazine you're working for. Have you shot any layouts for Playgirl which features male nudity? No, I've done a, I've done a cover for Playgirl, but I haven't done any male nude layouts. Why not? I like photographing men. I, I'm FI. I love photographing men. It really turns me on. But male nude, well, there's been problems with Playgirl. It's very, men aren't sex, sex objects. They're power objects. I mean, we love men for their, for their power, for their char charisma, for what, what they're going to give us. But they, we don't really necessarily love them for their bodies. I mean, that's secondary. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> you mean that Marin Milan, the publisher of Playgirl, or who was when she was on this show, and, 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 Nancy, and Nancy Friday, <laughs> who was here and told us how gorgeous we are and that women are watching men more and more, that they were kidding old Tom? I think I they love men, old but Tom. I'll take any shape or size. <laughs> it's not the body that can. It's really... What is it? Is it the... It's the power. Mm -hmm. It's power. It's charisma. It's who you are, what do, you're doing. Do, do, and a little girl, do what I say. Do, <laughs> do you think that a lot of women feel as you do, Doc? I mean, do you have I friends think, who feel that way? Yes, I think so. I mean, it's sex, if you're talking about being turned on sexually, I'm turned on sexually by a guy who's dominant, a guy that really makes me, puts me in my place. I mean, I need it. It's, um, Why? Because it makes me feel sexy. If I feel aggressive and if I feel, feel very ballsy and if I feel that I'm, you know, the top dog, I don't feel sexy. I feel powerful. I mean, I love it, but I am Yeah, but there's something very sexy. sexy about using power. For a man. About an, well, and about a, inflicting your will upon another and I'm giving like the other... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm willing to change. But you... <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I'm uh, but, very you, but, but you know what I mean. You know, they say one of the great joys of command, if you're in the military, is being able to inflict your will upon another person and giving that person no choice. If you're in the military, you're a man. No, they have women in the military, but they don't inflict their will. <laughs> uh, they just lie on their back. No. <laughs> not, in the, not in the army I was in. <laughs>